to get a good drag coefficient prediction, we need to improve our near wall mesh. And we need to actually worry about this entity called the Y plus. And to understand what Y plus is, we need to know what is the structure of the turbulent boundary layer. So I'll talk about the structure of the turbulent boundary layer and then move on to talking about the Y plus. This is a graphic of the turbulent boundary layer from the ANSYS training documentation used courtesy of ANSYS. And if, so this is the wall and this is the region outside the boundary layer where um, viscous effects are not important. And so as I'm coming off the wall, the velocity increases very rapidly and then it doesn't increase, you know, it's more or less constant because of the mixing that's um, caused by the, the turbulent eddies that are shown schematically over here. And so these eddies are pushing the momentum closer and closer to the wall. And it turns out right next to the wall, the turbulence gets damped out and you get this uh, laminar region called the viscous sublayer. And at this kind of you know high Reynolds number, it's very, very tiny. And if you want to get a good drag prediction, actually you need to resolve the viscous sublayer. And that you know, means that your mesh next to the wall has to be very fine. And then outside, you know, if you're going away from the viscous sublayer, you get this uh, layer called the log layer. And we'll see on the next slide why it's called the log layer. And the buffer layer is, uh, is a region between the viscous sublayer and the log layer. And this region is called the inner layer, and it has a predictable variation uh, based on what people have observed in experiments. Um, and that's called law of the wall, and we'll see what that predicted, you know, what that predictable variation is. And you have to, you know, look in terms of non-dimensional quantities, and that's where y plus comes in. I'll look at that in the in the next slide. And then you have the outer layer, and then you transition into the free stream. So let's take a look at, uh, you know, what's the what's the variation of velocity in non-dimensional terms in this region. And that brings up the concept of y plus. So here's a dimensional velocity profile. This is the distance from the wall, and that's a velocity. Again, as I'm coming off the wall, the velocity increases rapidly, and I get high gradients close to the wall. And then I go, and I can plot this as a non-dimensional velocity profile. So I go from um, the velocity, the dimensional velocity, to a non-dimensional velocity called u plus, and I go from the non-dimensional distance, uh, the dimensional distance to a non-dimensional distance, y plus, and this is plotted as u plus over log y plus um, versus log y plus. And the non-dimensionalization of the velocity with, with, with respect to a velocity scale, which is called the friction velocity, and it's calculated this way. It's calculated from the wall shear. It's not a velocity, it has a dimensions of velocity and this actually comes from you know dimensional analysis and so on. And this is kind of a counterintuitive non-dimensionalization because a wall shear is what we are looking for in the first place. So it's uh, it you know it involves a quantity from the from the solution. So we need to know the solution to calculate what u plus is um, or what u tau is. Um, and then this is a non-dimensionalization for the the distance from the wall. This looks like a Reynolds number to me. Um, and the, the y is the length scale used in the Reynolds number, and the friction velocity is the velocity scale. And if you plot u plus over log y plus, in the log layer, you get this logarithmic variation. So you know when you're plotting it versus log y plus, you'll get a straight line. So this would be called the log layer. And below a y plus of about 11, you're in the viscous sublayer. Okay, so that's in the viscous sublayer. And about that, you're in the log layer. And in fact, if your y plus is between, uh, in this region, where you're getting that linear variation, so this t tends to be 30 and this is 300. And we are using standard wall functions in which case we want our y plus range to be between 30 and 300 so that we are in our first 
cell center is in the log layer. So if we have that y plus range, it means that the first cell center is in the log layer, and it can assume that you know u plus it goes as log y plus, and it'll use that to calculate the wall shear. That's a much more accurate calculation of wall shear than if you use the cell center values because of the high gradients. You you know that'll give you a high level of error. So what is the y plus range in our for our mesh? I went and plotted it in CFD post, and you can do that similar to um, the plot that we did for the pressure coefficient. Um, and it's in you know it's a quantity that's inbuilt, so you can plot it. And thirty is over here. So we are using standard wall functions, which is the default. And between 30 and you know 300, so this range looks okay, but we don't want to be below 30. We are in you know the, the buffer region between the viscous sublayer and the, the log layer. And, and so you see most of the airfoil, our Y plus is not very good. Um, and what we need to do is to refine the mesh and get a y plus of ideally a one, which means that we have to refine the mesh like crazy. This is the best. Um, ANSYS recommends at least you know y plus of five. So when you when you get down to that level of y plus, you can go from the standard wall function to what's called the enhanced wall treatment. You'll see it in the in the fluent menu, and in that case, you know it'll your first cell is in the in the viscous sublayer, and you'll the the wall shear is much more accurate. It's not using the uh, the u plus equals log y plus variation, and um, and you'll improve your drag coefficient. We won't do it here in Fluent because it's actually quite time consuming. Because you know when you when you refine the mesh like crazy near the wall, um, you get you know skewed cells and so on, and then you get convergence problems and so on. But as you get more into CFD, you know, and with turbulent flow simulations, you really have to worry about the Y plus.